So the other thing you want to do is, so basically you want to sort of mulch up just a little bit. So what you want to do is whack. Once you've broken it up, once you've broken it up a bit, the yummy, the secret ingredient, or one of the secret ingredients, the garlic. You can chop them up, you can put them in. If you've got a food processor, they're going to chop them up pretty good anyway. Nice big handful to start with of some good Parmesan cheese. So get that right in there. And that's going to like start getting all sort of gluggy and yummy. And as you can see, it's it's pretty much starting to sort of chop up, almost looking like uh, tabbouleh. But what we need to do is add more oil to start getting it thicker and thicker. We need to add salt. We also need to add the nuts. We like to add the nuts last, just to kind of give the consistency. So you just give it another good glug, and you want this to kind of get nice and juicy, and the oil's going to sink right through and make it taste really, really yummy. So we give it another whiz. Now you want to, um, you want to, push, you want to push everything down on the round the side so you can kind of get all of the mixture all of the mixture uh, mixed up thoroughly. So you get some sort of spatula thing. I steal my housemates because I don't have one. And that's the payoff. I use a spatula, she gets to eat my pesto. That's not such a bad thing, I think. I guess she sees it right that way. Anyway. Then we, uh, we don't lift the spoon because we're filming. And uh, we put it to one side. And now this needs a little bit more oil. Just because we've got so much pesto leaves in there, and we want to give it a nice, good. As you can see, I've got like this little pourer thing on it, so it doesn't come out really fast. So it might look like I'm pouring a lot of oil, but there's not a real lot of oil in there yet. So we give that, and we give it a nice, solid, big finger full of ground salt or uh, sea flakes, salt flakes. If you want to uh, just get the loose stuff, or uh, just make sure you get sea salt because it's going to taste better and it's going to be better for you. You don't want to put too much in. Okay. And as you can see, it's now starting to look more and more like pesto. Mmm, yummy. Okay. Now the, the consistency is pretty good. It's uh, it's still a bit green, but it's going to break down. And we're going to chop it up some more. We'll get on a faster pace, but first I want to put the pine nuts in, give it a bit more consistency, and uh, a nice handful of cashews just for some good flavour. Not too many, don't want to go overboard, and uh, we'll give that a bit of a chop. It's going to make a lot of noise with the nuts. And again, you want to push that all the, all the good stuff down to the sides kind of mix it through a little bit and um, it's almost ready, it's almost done, it's ready for tasting just about. So what we want to do is get a little bit of a flavour for it and see what it's like. It's not bad. Now because I put a lot of garlic in, sometimes people just think it's too much garlic so I just put a few drops of lemon juice, if you've got some fresh lemon even better. Just put a couple of drops of lemon juice in. And you want to just do it by taste. You don't want to go pouring tons of lemon juice in or put tons of salt in and then you try and fix it. Just put a little bit of time in because it will actually, once the flavour soak in a bit, it'll change its flavour gradually. Okay, we're consistency. You can put this on pasta. You can put it, <clears throat> I tell you it's really nice on, on some nice toast, make a bruschetta even. And uh, just have it as a dip and it goes down very, very well. 
and it only takes five minutes to make. It takes longer to put the bowls out and put everything in its, in its right order so you've got everything on the, on the bench ready to go than it does actually make it. So there's no excuse for not making fresh pesto. Trust you a couple of bucks for uh, some pesto, some, sorry, cost you a couple of bucks for some, some basil. Now, you can make pesto with anything. Preferably, if you're going to make traditional pesto, you need standard Italian basil, the soft, soft leaves. But you can make it out of anything. You can make it out of coriander. You make a really nice pesto out of coriander. You can probably try making it out of Thai basil even. Some people have asked me, can I use Thai basil? That's all I've got. But that doesn't mean that um, you could look any further. I'm going to lick this because this tastes good. Mmm. It's good on toast too, believe it or not. Get some really nice bread. Great on toast. And there it is. Can you see that? Lovely. Fresh batch of pesto. This will keep in the fridge for um, probably two weeks. But around here, probably only the last week and a half. And uh, that's because it tastes good and everybody loves it. And that's how you make fresh pesto. No excuses, people. It's fresh.